Hello, Hofstra fans, and welcome to another WB Mason Coaches Report with the head coach of Hofstra Field Hockey, Courtney Vino. Coach, how are we doing today? Good. How are you, Nick? Can't complain. It's Monday. Uh, it's a gorgeous day outside. Let's get right into it. Uh, you, Your team opened conference play this past Saturday against Drexel, and unfortunately, uh, it was a 2-1 decision against the Pride. Um, looking back at the film, why don't you give us a breakdown from, from this Saturday, Sunday's home, uh, conference opener? Yeah, I think uh, Sunday's game ultimately was um, a battle of momentum. Um, I think that we had the momentum the first half of the game and um, created really great scoring opportunities, got on the board, uh, scoreboard once. Um, so entered halftime up one nothing. We actually had two more great scoring opportunities in that first half um, off a second penalty corner. Uh, Cammie Larson missed a... Uh, executed shot about an inch away from that post, which was a really exciting time. Um, and then also Yasmin Verdos had a 1v1, the goalkeeper, a 50-yard uh, basically breakout attacking opportunity that, um, you know, was a was very exciting as well. So the, we, we absolutely had the momentum in the first half. Um, ultimately, we came out into the second half and we were a bit hesitant and um, struggle to get that momentum back in the second half. So it was, it was kind of a battle of a uh, battle of two different halves. And, and ultimately, um, you know, we started getting the fourth quarter was a bit more uh, controlled for us. And we started pressing in a different manner to kind of control um, Drexel's uh, speed and momentum change that they had gained in that third quarter, but ultimately uh, couldn't get back on the scoreboard in time. Yeah, uh, uh, going off of what you said on momentum, I definitely agree. I thought in the in that first half, your team looked definitely like they had a lot of a lot of the momentum behind them, especially you know following Cammy's first uh, first goal of the season, and then coming into that second half, uh, it, it looked like a completely different Drexel team came out of the came out of the halftime. They had they got I think eight penalty corners all game, all, all in the second half, which is you know that's that's a crazy statistic to to have happen. Uh, so it was an unfortunate start. Uh, 0 and 1 in conference play with a tough conference schedule. You know, how do you bounce back from opening this your conference schedule uh, with a very very close loss? Yeah, um, you know, we're gonna do everything we can this this week to prepare for JMU on Saturday. And um, you know, it's not the end all be all to start conference 0 and 1, but it does it does make you have to to dig out of a hole a little bit. So. Uh, we're going to focus this week on continuing to grow and ultimately our kids, you know, we're, we're there. We are, are, we are there. And um, I think they can feel that. And I think they can see success of when we are playing, we're playing at a very high level um, and putting things together at a high level. And now it's, it's the problem solving of um, continuing to, to remain up in a game and, um, you know, that confidence of, of, of uh, finishing a game out ultimately, but um, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, learning how to see out games, that's something that you learn over time. And I, I do yeah. agree. Like the team has shown improvements, you know, from, from week to week, to, from game to game. So the, I think the positive results will come and the results ultimately will come, you know, as, as we progress for uh, in the, in the last uh, coming, coming month and change of the, of the season. Mm -hmm. And you brought up uh, our next, your next opponent, uh, JM, James Madison. Um, why don't you break down for us the Dukes? You know, what, what sort of problems do, do they pose for your team and what things about them can you exploit and take advantage of? Yeah, uh, JMU ultimately is, is always very athletic. They always have great speed. Their forwards um, attack and attack quickly. Um, you know, I think that they're going to be uh, one of the top teams in the conference this year. They've got great experience and great seniors and juniors that have, uh, you know, developed uh, within the CAA and have been, you know, highly recognized. And I think ultimately it's, um, it's, it's just continuing to try and settle things down and get on the scoreboard early and, and uh, continue to plug away once you get on the scoreboard for the Hofstra Pride is. I, I think that we have confidence that we can create attack, get into the circle or creating those circle entries. Um, you know, we just need to settle things down on defense when, when the game gets, um, 
you know, flip-flops momentum. And, and that happens every game, right? Every team and every sport takes a chance at, at and takes their turn at the momentum in the game. So we just need to make sure that we can uh, play our style and play our own, keep plugging away and, and uh, learn to finish and win games ultimately. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, learning to win games, that's something that doesn't happen overnight. It's it, like you said, it's, it's a process of improving, you know, every day in practice. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you'll also this this uh, Saturday will also be senior day for for the program. You're going to be honoring uh, a number of seniors. Um, could you just give us a quick preview of the kind of, you know, what what uh, these these graduating seniors have meant to you and meant to the program of Hofstra Field Hockey? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's actually, you know, it's really special. We're going to be honoring three seniors um, Two are returning and taking their fifth year kind of returning with this whole COVID um, year of eligibility being extended, et cetera, but um, honoring three seniors and every post game and even in just the past four years, uh, their first year was my first year here at Hofstra. Um, so I was an assistant with them for their first two and transitioned into this head coaching role with them. And um, I think that brings a special element of um, what we've done together in the past four years. And, um, you know, it's it, their leadership and their maturity and, and just even uh, their demeanor in this program has helped push this culture forward and push this program. Um, so they, they've bought in, they, they know where they, where this program can go and they know where they want it to go. And even just hearing them after games and them speak on behalf of the team and the program and we're a young team. We've got a big group of first years and and uh, four sophomores that are still very influenced. And um, these seniors have done a really great job of kind of setting the tone and, and the goals and what this program can be. And um, I'll, I'm grateful to have them. And, and I know that all three of these guys and the two that we'll be celebrating next year, all five of them, it's a special class. And man, do they have bright futures. It's going to be really cool to see what they do in the next uh, one year, but the next three, you know, and, and really see what their adventure, where their adventures take them and, and kind of, um, you know, live in their twenties a little bit. So it'll be this, uh, this Saturday, March 27th, Hofstra will host JMU from the Hofstra Field Hockey Stadium at 1 p.m. Uh, you can follow everything about Hofstra Field Hockey, how to watch the game, how to, how to get the results, how to get the stats, everything about that on GoHofstra.com. For head coach Courtney Vino, I am Nick Capitos, and thank you again for joining us for the WB Mason Coaches Report.